Welcome back to another tabletop review. Today we'll look at the Colt Model 1908 Vest Pocket 25 caliber semi-automatic pistol. I've attended a few auctions a while back and at one of those I saw this little Colt. I like mouse guns, I've collected a few, but I've never had a chance to acquire one of the really early pistols before. John Moses Browning designed the Colt Model N or the 1908 following Browning's earlier European version of this pistol the Belgium-made Fabrique Nationale or FN Model 1906. Browning had actually approached Colt earlier with his design and Colt had turned it down. But with the success of the FN Model 1906, Colt got in on the action and the Colt 1908 Vest Pocket Pistol was born. The FN Model 1906 and Colt 1908 Vest Pocket were very similar and were chambered in Browning's new 25 ACP round. The Colt 1908 was produced between 1908 and 1948. By the way, the first FN models were produced from 1906 until they were replaced by the famous Baby Browning Whispers, which was produced from 1931 until 1979. The Baby Browning is still in production today by Precision Small Arms Incorporated PSA, where the pistol was rebranded the PSA 25 Baby. For me, I've always been drawn to the Colt 1908 because it was the early American-made vest pocket pistol. This one was made in 1920. Let's make sure this gun is cleared first. By the way, if you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The Browning Design Colt Model 1908 Vest Pocket Pistol is a compact, hammerless, striker-fired, semi-automatic, single-action pistol. It was known as the Model N within the Colt Company. This little gun featured Browning's new innovative hammerless design, the striker-fired system. It also utilized Browning's 25 ACP round. During its time, the Model 1908 Vest Pocket was promoted as advanced for its safety features, which included a standard slide-locking safety catch, as well as a grip safety, but in 1916, Colt engineer George Tansley invented a third safety feature for the pistol, the magazine safety disconnector, which prevented accidental firing with the magazine removed. This additional safety device was added to production in the latter 139,000 serial number range of the Colt 1908 vest pocket and patented by Colt in 1917. All in all, this was quite an advanced little gun for its time. I think that's what makes this Colt 1908 sort of special. The Colt 1908 vest pockets were typically blue finished, but they were also nickel plated and of course special orders included gold plated, silver plated, and engraved. Grips were basically black hard rubber, but walnut, ivory, mother of pearl uh, were also available. About 420,000 of these pistols were produced before Colt ceased production in 1948. Actually, production stopped in 1940, and only about 2,000 pistols were made from leftover parts after that. However, eventually, Colt contracted with Astra of Spain to produce the Colt Jr. after Colt ceased production of the 1908. Okay, so given the age and the fame of this little pistol, it's not surprising that it's been seen in numerous films. I found quite a few, but here are just a few. Uh, 1991, Dead Again. 1997, Austin Powers International Man of Mystery. And 2007, Rush Hour 3. As for packaging, unfortunately this gun no longer had its original box or paperwork, but Colt 1908s were sold with one magazine and a cardboard box, and included an information sheet which highlighted the safety features including the magazine disconnect feature, and also included an ad for Colt, Pearl, and Ivory grips. As for specifications, the Colt 1908 is a 25 ACP single action semi-automatic pistol. It's striker fired. The gun is steel, including the slide and frame. The barrel is 2 inches in length. Sights are fixed built into the top of the slide. Slide serrations on the rear of the slide are well defined. The safety includes a slide lock, grip safety, as well as magazine disconnect. Overall height is 3 inches. Overall length is 4.5 inches. 
Width is about one inch at the grips. The grips are hard rubber. Older versions are rounded at the top. They are flat across after 1914 and the grips would be made of walnut after 1924, although rubber grips were still uh, available through special order. The weight without the, with the empty magazine is 13 ounces. Magazine capacity is six rounds. By the way, magazines are really expensive and very hard to find for these little guns. And uh, be aware that the original magazines are two-toned. That comes from a process Colt used to harden the tops of the magazines after they were made by dipping the uh, tops of the magazines in molten cyanide solution. Knockoffs usually have a straight line of color change. Real are irregular. Trigger of travel is very short, breaking at 10 pounds. As for my range experience, well keep in mind that this gun is over 100 years old. So taking this antique firearm to the range is not something I do very often, but I did it for the purpose of this review. So how did it perform? Well actually, pretty well. Let me state here that before I considered firing it, I stripped it down for careful analysis of function, checking all the parts to make sure everything was operating properly. Obviously, like most of the 25 caliber mouse pistols, this is basically a get off me gun. So I was only interested in getting on paper 15 feet to target, but that turned out not to be difficult at all. Not too bad, considering that the 25 rounds effective range is about 30 feet and the maximum firing range is about 75 feet. The Colt's magazine doesn't eject when you push the European release on the heel. You have to pry it out. As I understand it's typical, the magazine is well made and the six rounds load easily. The mag seats nicely. Bracking this light is smooth, tight, light, and sure. The safety has to be off in order to rack the slide. Also, the safety grip spring is stiff, so you have to really squeeze the grip to be able to pull the trigger. My hands are large with long fingers, so uh, this is a little awkward for me, but not too bad. The sights are really small, so small that I'm not sure they're meaningful. However, one of my everyday carry weapons is a C-Camp 32, which has no sights, so I'm used to training with point-and-shoot guns. Unfortunately, as you probably know, it's very hard to find 25 ACP rounds today. I did find a box of Blazers. Uh, they are not my favorite. I've had problems with Blazer ACP in the past, but it is what it is, and I was glad to even have these. So firing Blazer 50 grain full metal jacket rounds, the Colt 1908 failed to eject the first round. That's kind of typical for Blazer 25 caliber rounds. However, thereafter, it functioned flawlessly. The trigger is double action only with a very short pull to the wall and then about a 10 pound crisp firing. The 25 caliber is a very light load, so this gun is very comfortable to shoot. The gun feels solid. There's hardly any muzzle lift, so it's easy to stay on target. Given the size of the Colt 1908, I thought my accuracy was actually pretty good at 15 feet. As for cons, accepting that this gun is 100 years old and accepting its purpose at the time it was designed, the main con I can come up with is the stiff spring on the grip safety. But it's not bad and it does work. It does what it's supposed to. Uh, I just don't think it needs to be as stiff as it is. Another issue would be the mag release location and the fact that you have to pry the magazine out. Finally, the sights are really useless. Now, you probably already know what I think about the uh, 25 caliber round. Not only is it nearly impossible to find these days, and even if you do, the cost is outrageous, it's really inadequate as a defensive caliber. If you're going to carry for defense, be aware that although it might be more reliable than a rimfire 22, ballistically, it's not much of an improvement. Some argue that it's no improvement at all, and it's certainly more expensive if you can even find the 25 ACP round today. As for pros, well this is just a really cool little gun. It's beautifully designed and fitted. The action is tight and still functions as smoothly as a new gun. It works like it was intended and it's accurate enough. It's a superb mouse gun, easy to carry and hide. With its three safeties, it's probably one of the safest mouse guns to carry. It's a classic firearm worth acquiring and hanging on to.
This assembly of the Colt 1908 is relatively simple. Remove the magazine, make sure the gun is unloaded. My recommendation is you wear safety glasses because there are springs under tension. We're going to pull back on the slide a little until the grooves on the barrel are just uncovered. That will be the sweet spot for aligning the lugs on the barrel with the slots on the inside of, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the slide. We'll see those more clear, clearly in a minute. Uh, that should allow you to rotate the barrel clockwise till it stops. You'll see the lugs through the ejection port. Okay, so we're just going to pull it back a little bit. There are the grooves and we just want them uncovered and then just find that sweet spot and now you can see that we have the barrel rotating. So I rotate it clockwise and now I can release it and I'm going to uh, allow the slide to move forward slowly while I keep my, my thumb on the back area here holding the firing pin and spring down to keep them from flying out of the gun was cocked. If the gun wasn't cocked, the spring would remain in the slot, but it's best to watch this carefully. So there we have the uh, recoil spring and rod. We have the firing pin and spring. Looking at the underside of the slide, it, the slide is upside down. The barrel is rotated until the uh, lugs are facing up toward you like this. And then you should be able to pull the barrel forward a little bit, tilt it up, and remove it from the slide. That's basically it. Rear assembly is basically the opposite. We're going to start with uh, returning the recoil spring and rod to the frame. Uh, the spring end faces out. I'm going to return the barrel to the slide. Uh, the lugs will be facing up. Once the barrel is in the slide, you can rotate the barrel clockwise until the lugs disappear. Next, return the firing pin and spring to the frame. It'll only go one way. Now before I return the slide to the frame, I want to point out the slots in the frame where the lugs on the barrel ride. This is what you're trying to line up these lugs with these slots on the frame. With the barrel returned to the slide, the lugs should be facing up through the ejection port. We now can return the slide to the frame. We're going to bring the slide back and we're going to line up these lugs with the slots that you can see through the ejection port. When you're at the sweet spot, you'll be able to rotate the barrel counterclockwise to hide the lugs, and the barrel is now locked into the frame. You now can return the magazine to the, uh, to the gun. And you're done. The Colt 1908 hasn't been produced since 1948, and that's a long time ago. Basically, this is a collector's gun. Today, True Gun Value reports the average national sales of the basic blue Colt 1908 Viz Pocket is selling for about $800. Special finishes and engraved models, or like new condition uh, with the original box and paperwork, could sell for $1,500 or more. Of course, these are average prices. At auction, I've seen Colt 1908 sell for two to three hundred dollars more than the amounts I've quoted here. So if you see one for about five hundred dollars, I'd say that was a real good bargain. Well, in conclusion, I think the Colt 1908 Vest Pocket is still a heck of a pistol, even though its design is over a hundred years old. I know by today's standards it's completely inadequate, but if you collect guns, you know you really should have one of these in your collection. The value of the Colt 1908 continues to climb. In this past year, the Colt 1908 value has increased by $62.
but more importantly, the Colt 1908's place in history is secure. Whether we're talking about Browning and Colt, and the advent of the small defensive pistol, or the application of the striker fired system, or the development of the safeties on this gun, the Colt 1908 Best Pocket Pistol is a classic firearm that deserves the attention and respect. This little gun still functions beautifully and is still fun to shoot. And that's the neat thing about collecting these firearms. For me, being able to reliably and safely still enjoy one of these on the range from time to time is just fantastic. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.